with a big time uh, oil price hike tomorrow, should we gear up for more weeks of price increases? That big question and more with Energy Undersecretary Gerardo Ergiza Jr. Good evening, Music Ergiza. Welcome to the big story. Good evening, Robbie. Uh, good evening, Gretchen, and to all our viewers and listeners. Music Ergiza, kanina, dun sa balita natin, you mentioned sana power to intervene. What exactly does that mean? Well, uh, you see, alam nyo, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, this is a global problem. I am uh, now in the United States and uh, oil uh, increased by a dollar per gallon and uh, this morning about uh, by 19 cents. So we're all address addressing this kind of uh, problem. Now, the root of all of this, as I've mentioned, is that uh, we have an existing law which was passed in uh, 1998 and we call this the oil deregulation law. And uh, under the law, it states that the cost of fuel will be based on a certain benchmark, which is the world market price. And when you sell this uh, in uh, retail stores, you have to first, uh, based on this, then add up the operational, administrative, uh, transportation, uh, the taxes, the insurance, and other costs. So this is uh, the beginning of everything. This should be addressed and we have called on Congress to have this amended. Of course, there are other short-term uh, suggestions that we uh, ask Congress, including the suspension of the excise tax because an additional amount is being added in the value of, of oil. Uh, with respect to the short-term uh, uh, solutions, we have asked oil companies to give discounts. We have this, what we call the Pantawit, Pasada program of the government is being managed by the LFTRB, where subsidies given to the transport sector. And we have uh, subsidy also to the farmers and fisher folks, which is being managed by uh, the Department of Agriculture. Mm. And so, uh, mm. Yes. So, Yusek Ergisa, as you pointed out, we still have some options, but as you also pointed out from the very start, a lot of this is, is factors external to us. Given that, that this is a global problem. Is there any way to even project how much longer we expect prices, world prices in particular, to keep going up? Well, uh, let me first say that uh, we have had uh, increases as early as, as October. Mm. And uh, the main reason is that where every country is going back to mm. their respective economic activities. And, you know, uh, when you have these activities, you need energy. And what was hit most is the uh, transport sector. And there's so much demand and uh, the uh, production is not being coped up. The OPEC promised to produce about 400,000 more, but uh, it's only producing 10,000 uh, barrels a day uh, as of now. We have the problem with Iran, which supplies 700,000. Venezuela, which supplies 400,000. Uh, this uh, will uh, supposedly consist of an additional 1.1 to 1.2 uh, million. But... Uh, uh, this is not being delivered because of sanctions against them. And uh, this, uh, as you all know, has worsened because of the Russian Ukraine problem. Uh, because of this war, uh, the supply to Europe uh, by Russia, because the, they have supply contracts with Russia, is not being uh, uh, completely complied with. But uh, with respect to the Philippines, we don't have any direct uh, problem with this problem, uh, with this war because the Philippines has no supply contract with Russia. Okay. But we, we are being supplied with finished products by China, Japan, and South Korea. And these countries are importing from uh, Russia's crude oil. Uh, however, uh, with respect to distribution, uh, the products of Russia are brought to the Asia Pacific through supply vessels and through the pipeline uh, uh, connecting Russia and China. Okay, Yusek Ergiza, maraming salamat po. That was Energy Under Secretary Gerardo Ergiza Jr.